Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. With the NHL trade deadline less than two weeks away now, the next 11 days will likely see its usual onslaught of rumours and trade proposals from insiders and fans across social media. Though many analysts are expecting this year's deadline to be much quieter than years past due to the flat salary cap and the lack of space for the league's top teams, but there's bound to be some notable moves made before the 3pm deadline, whether that be from contenders looking to add the final piece to their championship puzzle, or rebuilding teams looking to sell high and maximise their returns for future seasons. Given that there are plenty of players on the trading block at the moment, and there are a number of potential deals being thrown around, I thought it would be fun to try something a little bit different on the channel. Thanks to the response on my recent community tab post, in today's video I'm going to be taking a look at some trade proposals that you guys submitted to me and give each of them a grade based on the overall value going either way, whether the deal makes sense for the two teams involved, as well as the possibility of the trade actually taking place before the April 12th deadline. So without further ado, join me as I grade your trade deadline proposals. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes to help you explore new skills, deepen existing passions, or get lost in creativity. Skillshare has thousands of online classes in a wide variety of topics such as graphic design, creative writing, photography, and so much more. My personal favourite has been the Learn Premiere Pro and edit a how-to video for beginners in their film and video topic, as I've been wanting to learn some new editing tricks in order to make my video stand out from the crowd that little bit more, and it's great that I can simply log on, find a class in the exact topic that I need, and learn from someone who clearly knows what they're talking about. Not only that, there are no ads anywhere on Skillshare's platform, and they are always launching new premium classes, so you'll never have to watch a commercial mid-class, and you can instead focus on learning the most up-to-date information in your chosen field. If joining a community like this sounds like your cup of tea, boy do I have just the deal for you. The first 1,000 people who click the link in the description or the pinned comment of this video will get access to a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. That way you can try before you buy, and maybe even learn something new along the way. So if you're interested in picking up a new skill, taking a talent to the next level, or getting lost in all things creativity, click the link in the description or the pinned comment down below, and enjoy a free trial to Skillshare's premium membership on me. You're welcome, folks. Skillshare. Explore your creativity. But anyway, back to the video. Let us begin with one of the more interesting ideas that I received, which would see the Florida Panthers acquire defenseman Tony D'Angelo from the New York Rangers in exchange for a 2021 third round draft pick. Now, D'Angelo is a 25-year-old right-hand shot defenseman who has scored just a single point and posted a minus six in six regular season games, and he is currently in the first year of a two-year, $9.6 million contract worth an average annual value of $4.8 million a season. Let's be honest here, folks. Tony D'Angelo is still a pretty polarizing character in the NHL as things stand. Obviously, his incident with Alexander Georgiev towards the end of January slash early February has meant that there's been some questions surrounding whether he's actually going to play in the NHL ever again, let alone for the end of the 2020 slash 21 season. But what makes this idea really interesting is thanks to the injury to Aaron Ekblad of the Florida Panthers and him being out of the lineup pretty much for the rest of the regular season, there's now an opening on that right-hand side of their defense. I could certainly see why a team like Florida would be interested in acquiring a high-scoring right-hand shot defenseman like Tony D'Angelo for the rest of the season. Of course, his numbers this year haven't particularly been very good, but he scored 53 points in 68 games last year. 53 points in 68 games is nothing to laugh at, folks. So I, I'm not surprised that a team like Florida might be interested in picking up a guy like him. But that said, I'm not sure this is going to go ahead because of his off-ice issues. Now let's be honest here, the Rangers, while they would like to get something of decent value in return for a guy that they're paying $4.8 million a season to, 
Given the fact that they've said that D'Angelo is never going to play another game in a New York Rangers jersey, they're going to be happy by getting something in return. They've been trying to trade him ever since the incident went down, and, you know, it would be considered a victory in and of itself if they managed to get any type of draft pick, player, or prospect in return. But the problem is, I think the fact that D'Angelo's cap hit and the fact that his contract lasts until the end of next season, his recent off-ice issues, and his overall reputation around the league will probably deter both the the Panthers and any other NHL team in picking him up for the rest of the year. I think it's going to be very difficult for a team to justify bringing D'Angelo in regardless of the injuries they have or the need for scoring from their back end. I think with this proposal I'm going to grade it a C because I like the concept, I find it very entertaining as it certainly makes sense from an on-ice perspective but the off-ice perspective and the drama that may come with it makes the chances of this happening pretty unlikely if you ask me. But it's not a bad idea to kick things off is it folks i like this whoever sent this to me good job bud next up let's look at a deal involving one of the most likely players to be traded at the upcoming deadline which would see the colorado avalanche acquire forward taylor hall from the buffalo sabers in exchange for defenseman ryan graves now, Taylor Hall is a 29-year-old forward who has scored 18 points and posted a minus 21 in 34 games for the pretty terrible Buffalo Sabres squad, and he is currently on a one-year, $8 million contract, which currently holds a no-movement clause. So do keep that in mind, folks. Any trade involving Taylor Hall, he will have to waive that no-movement clause in order for it to go ahead. Now, for Buffalo, what they would be receiving, defenseman Ryan Graves. He's 25 years old, he scored 10 points, and posted a plus nine in 33 games this season and he's currently in the first year of a three-year 9.5 million dollar contract worth 3.2 million dollars a season with the avalanche now while there's some pretty decent players involved in this deal i've got to be honest i don't see this trade happening at all sure hall is practically guaranteed to move at the deadline given buffalo's absolute implosion so far this year and i would imagine that hall's recent performance and his terrible plus minus has reduced his price tag somewhat to what it might have been at the start of the year but i still think that the buffalo sabers will be able to acquire more than one player in return for taylor hall no offense to ryan graves of course as he is a a solid two-way defenseman on one of the best teams in the Western Conference this year, but you would expect that Buffalo would be looking to pick up a younger player who's already on an NHL roster, as well as several other draft picks in return for one of their better and higher paid players, especially if they're going to blow the whole thing up and start from scratch next season and go into a full-on rebuild once again. I'm going to give this proposal a D as I can see what it's going for by getting Buffalo some much needed help on their back end from a player who is yet to reach their prime and on a very team-friendly contract contract but the Sabres could and should ask for more when they trade Taylor Hall. At least in my opinion anyway. I think they can get more and they may as well get more but then again it's the Buffalo Sabres don't hold out much hope folks. Keep the Sabres in mind folks as we return to Florida for the next proposal as this trade sees the Panthers acquire defenseman Rasmus Ristolainen from the Buffalo Sabres in exchange for forward Henrik Borgström and a 2021 second round pick. Now, Rasmus Ristolainen is a 26-year-old right-hand shot defenseman who has scored just 8 points and posted a minus 18 in 27 games this season, and he's currently in the penultimate year of a 6-year, $32.4 million contract worth an average annual value of $5.4 million a season. On the flip side, Henrik Borgström is a 23-year-old forward who has scored 19 points in 58 total games with the Florida Panthers, but he hasn't suited up with the team so far this year. Instead, he scored 19 points in 27 games with HIFK Helsinki of the Finnish Liga. Now, similar to the Tony D'Angelo trade that we discussed earlier, I would very much think that the Florida Panthers would be interested in picking up another right-hand shot defenseman, but that said, very similar to the Taylor Hall trade that we just discussed, I think that the Buffalo Sabres will be wanting a little more than this in return for a guy like Rasmus Ristolainen. Of course, Ristolainen hasn't exactly produced the best season so far this year, and he doesn't necessarily carry the same trade value as he did, say, a year, two years ago, something like that, but the fact that he's one of the bigger defensemen on their roster, he's one of the more go-to guys for them, and I think if he was playing anywhere else other than Buffalo, he would be a legitimate top four defenseman in the NHL, a guy like Borgström might interest 
address them. He's 23 years old. He can't really find a place on the Panthers roster with their off-season acquisitions. He might be looking for a fresh start to kind of get a bigger role on an NHL roster. Buffalo might be the perfect place for him to do that, but I would think they'd want a little bit more than just Borgstrom and a second round pick. So I'm going to give this trade proposal a C, as I could see a very similar deal to this being made, whether it be with Florida or another team around the league, but I just think the Buffalo will be looking for a little bit more value for them in order to pull the trigger. If Buffalo are going to be smart about this, they need to pick up as much as they can for guys like Rasmus Ristolainen who are earning those big money. And obviously if they retain his salary, some of it, or half of it, whatever it is, they should be able to get even more in return, maybe even pick up another second round pick, which if I'm Buffalo, I would not complain with that at all. So I'm going to give this one a C. I think it's a pretty decent trade, all things considered. Next up is probably the most blockbuster trade in this video, as it sees the Pittsburgh Penguins acquire goaltender John Gibson from the Anaheim Ducks in exchange for fellow netminder Tristan Jarry, defenseman Brian Dumoulin, and forward Brian Rust. Now, John Gibson is a 27-year-old netminder who has posted a 7-12-5 record, a 3.02 goals against average, and a .897 save percentage in 24 games this year with the rebuilding Anaheim Ducks team, and he's in the second year of an eight-year, $51.2 million contract worth an average annual value of $6.4 million a season. It's also worth mentioning that he has a modified no-trade clause that kicks in at the beginning of the 21-22 season, so if Anaheim are going to trade him, now's probably the time to do so. And on the flip side, Tristan Jarry is a 25-year-old netminder who has posted a 15-8-2 record this year, with a 2.79 goals against average and a .910 save percentage in 25 games, and he's also in the first year of a three-year, $10.5 million contract worth an average annual value of $3.5 million a season. Also, Brian Dumoulin, he's 29 years old as a defenseman, he has 4 points and a plus 9 in 21 games this year, and he's in the 4th season of a 6 year, $24.6 million contract, worth an average annual value of $4.1 million a season, with a modified no trade clause as well. So if Pittsburgh want to trade Dumoulin, they're probably going to have to get his permission first. And last but by no means least, we have Brian Rust, who is a 28 year old forward, who has scored 28 points and registered a plus 8 in 36 games this season, and he's currently in the penultimate year of a 4-year $14 million contract, with an average annual value of $3.5 million a season. So those are all of the players involved in this deal. As you can see, every single one is a legitimate roster player in the NHL. They all have a place in the league as it stands right now, and if you want my opinion on this, folks, there is absolutely no way that the Pittsburgh Penguins make this trade. Just think about it for a minute, guys. The new Penguins front office that was instated earlier this season have already made it abundantly clear that they intend to go all in and try and win another Stanley Cup championship over the next few years, while the likes of Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin are still on the roster. So if they've already committed to this type of game plan, why would they then decide to go and trade one of their top defensively minded defensemen, a top six forward in their forward core, and an all-star goalie in exchange for John Gibbs? Soon. This seems like the kind of trade that the Penguins would make after their window has closed so they could shed some salary and restart their championship cycle. And besides, both John Gibson and Brian Dumoulin have modified no trade clauses coming up in their contracts. I would imagine that Gibson would be interested in moving to a contender and getting the chance to compete for the Stanley Cup, but I don't think Brian Dumoulin has any interest in moving elsewhere anytime soon. He's helped them win two Stanley Cups in the last five years. I think he's pretty happy where he is. While this move could improve Pittsburgh's net mining position, it would severely weaken their top six and their defensive core. And given the injuries they have already faced and had to deal with for a long time at the start of this season, they need that depth in both of those areas in order to solidify their position in the standings. I'm going to have to give this trade proposal a solid F. I'm sorry, but it doesn't make any sense to me. Some of you might disagree and think it might be a good trade for them in the long run, but if we're talking about the entire Penguins roster, it doesn't make sense to to give up a player from every single position in order to slightly solidify your goaltending position a little bit better. It doesn't help Pittsburgh become a championship contender again, and I think it hurts them in the long run if I'm completely honest. So yeah, I'm giving this one an F. I'm sorry guys. 
The first proposal involving a Canadian team is up next, as it would see the Montreal Canadiens acquire defenseman Matthias Ekholm from the Nashville Predators, in exchange for forwards Joel Armia and Arturi Lekkonen, defenseman Victor Mete, as well as a second round draft pick both this year and next year too. Matthias Ekholm is a 30 year old blue liner who has scored 15 points and rated a plus 12 in 29 games this season, and he's currently in the penultimate year of a six year, $22.5 million contract worth $3.75 million a season. On the flip side, Yol Armia is 27 years old and has scored 10 points and a plus 6 in 24 games. He's in the final year of a two year, $5.2 million contract worth an average annual value of $2.6 million. Arturi Lekkonen is a 25 year old forward who scored 6 points and rated minus 1 in 23 games, and he's currently in the final year of a two year, $4.8 million contract worth an average annual value of $2.4 million. And lastly, Victor Mete is is a 22 year old blue liner who has scored a single point and rated a plus one in nine games and he's currently signed to a one year contract worth $735,000. Now I see what you're going for here, but that said, I think Montreal are giving up way too many pieces here in order for this deal to work. I mean, how often do you see a trade where two roster players, a prospect with some NHL experience, and a pair of second round draft picks are all shipped off for a top four blue liner and the fourth round pick that he included in that deal? How often do you see a huge package like that be sent off for one blue liner that's not even a superstar blue liner? He's, he's a solid top four guy, but he's not a superstar by any stretch. Now obviously none of the players that the Habs will be giving up here are superstars in their own rights either, but the asking price is still a little too high if you ask me. That's a lot of players to give up. If you removed a draft pick or a roster player out of this deal and kind of balanced it out a little bit more in Montreal's favour in terms of the pieces that were moving, then yeah, I, I could see something like this happening at the trade deadline. But taking this proposal at face value and not changing any of it, I, I don't really see it working. There's just too many moving parts involved. So I'm going to give this trade a C, as I can see that some thought went into it to try and maximise the return for either side here. But the number of pieces involved and the overall quality of those pieces compared to the big ticket item in Ekholm makes this trade pretty unlikely. It's a good effort though, I do quite like this trade, it's one that really makes you think and I quite like that. Penultimately, we have a deal involving two familiar trade partners, as it sees the Tampa Bay Lightning acquire forward Ryan Strome and a 2021 second round draft pick from the New York Rangers, in exchange for forward Anthony Shirelli and a 2021 first round draft pick. Now, Anthony Shirelli is a 23 year old forward who has scored 21 points and rated a plus nine in 28 games this year. And he's currently in the first season of a three year, $14.4 million contract worth an average annual value of $4.8 million a year. And on the flip side, Ryan Strome is a 27 year old forward who has scored 32 points and rated a plus five in 34 games this year. And he's currently in the first season of a two year, $9 million contract worth an average annual value of $4.5 million a season. Now, as a Rangers fan, as enticing as this sounds, I don't really understand why the Tampa Bay Lightning would want to make this deal. Sure, Ryan Strome has been far more productive this season compared to Shirelli, and he would save the Lightning roughly $300,000 over the following 21-22 NHL season, but when you consider that Anthony Shirelli is four years younger than Strome is, has produced decent scoring numbers in his own right while playing a more limited role on the Lightning roster, and he helped the team win the Stanley Cup last season, he's proven what he can contribute to the lineup in the exact way that they've needed him to over the last few seasons in order to help the team go all the way and win it all. Why would the Tampa Bay Lightning ship him off for a player who's already in his prime I might add, just for a tiny saving on the cap and maybe an extra 10-15 points on the season? It's not as if the Lightning don't have high scoring players already on their roster. So I'm going to give this trade idea a B as I can see the thought process behind it in terms of the overall value going each way especially the first round pick going with Shirelli because he's slightly younger and less productive, and the second round pick going with Strome because Shirelli is slightly younger, but he might have a higher potential. But that said, the likelihood of this happening is very slim, almost impossible if you ask me. 
Although, as a Rangers fan, I would not be too upset to see this deal. Although I have quite enjoyed Ryan Strom as a New York Ranger. He's been pretty solid for the team this season, whether Panarin's been on his line or not. Unfortunately, though, I don't think it's the, a smart move to make for Tampa Bay. It might help them win another cup, which they wouldn't complain about. But I, I still think it's too much to give up. So, yeah, that's how I feel about that one. And finally, last but by no means least, we have a pretty big proposal to end on here, as this idea sees the Toronto Maple Leafs acquire forward Philip Forsberg from the Nashville Predators, in exchange for Rodian Amirov, Mikhail Abramov, a 2021 first round pick, and a 2022 second round pick. Now, Philip Forsberg is a 26-year-old forward who has scored 29 points and registered a minus 8 in 34 games this season, but the deal does say that the Predators would retain 50% of Philip Forsberg's salary, meaning that as he's in the penultimate year of a 6-year, $36 million contract worth an average annual value of $6 million a season, the Maple Leafs would only have $3 million of that deal up against the cap. Now on the flip side of this trade, what would be going to Nashville, Rodion Amarov was the 15th overall pick of the 2020 NHL draft, and he spent the year in Russia, where he scored 13 points in 39 KHL games with Salavat Yuleyev, and has yet to make his NHL debut. Also, Mikhail Abramov was a 2019 fourth round pick, and he scored 27 points in 23 games in the QMJHL this year, and he also has yet to make his NHL debut. Now, while I like the return that Nashville would receive here, as they pick up a pair of highly touted prospects and some draft picks for the future and for their eventual rebuild, this trade seems a little difficult to pull off as the Leafs have very little salary cap space at the moment. Even if Nashville retained up to 50% of Forsberg's salary, as things stand right now at the time of this recording, the Toronto Maple Leafs currently have less than $250,000 worth of cap space. They need at least three million million to get Forsberg onto the roster. I still think that the Nashville Predators would be more interested in picking up a younger but proven NHL roster player or two if they were even going to think about getting rid of their highest scorer in the last half a decade, but in order for this move to happen, Toronto would have to make several other changes to their roster in order to facilitate it with the salary cap demands, which may or may not happen depending on how many moves they make this deadline. I'm going to give this trade proposal a B, as I do like the idea and concept, and I think it would make the Toronto Maple Leafs a very deadly team come the postseason, but the execution still has a lot of question marks surrounding it. If they need to free up so much of that cap space, how are they going to get rid of that on their roster, and how will the loss of players in order to get that salary available affect their team in the long run? Will it mean that they don't have as many solid depth players on their roster? Does it mean they have to lose one of their regular players and their defensive core or their goaltending is weaker than it was before, so the fact that this deal would take so many other moves from the Maple Leafs in order to accommodate, I'm going to give it a B, because it's, it's fun, there's still a lot of question marks around it. And on that note, I'm going to end today's video. What do you guys think about these trade deadline proposals? Do you agree with my thoughts on each of these deals, or would you have graded them completely differently? Also, would you like to see more of this type of video on this channel? If this does well and you guys like it, then I'll definitely think about making more, but if you don't like it and you'd prefer me to stick to my usual content, I guess I'll do that instead. Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think, but thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Carl Fairbank, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, Drew Fawcett, Houston NG, Jordan Whitehead, Satan Otaku, The Legacy, Tom from Finland, Twin Sanity Dad, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.